What's up, guys? Ryan Matthews with Ben Persall here. We're from Optimum Athletes, and today we're here to beat a dead horse. Yes, again, we are talking about consistency in training. If you've heard our podcast, you've heard this a hundred times. But the reason we beat this dead horse is it's the biggest mistake we see young players make. And it's just the industry norm, right? You're a high school player. Your mom and dad are getting emails left and right about this showcase, that showcase. Come to this tournament. Play for this travel team. This, 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 that. And nowhere in there does it say, hey, we are going to prioritize and train and try to push your skills that scale to the next level. So I'm going to turn this over to Ben here. Ben, what are some of the biggest mistakes and some of the, the you know, the bad decisions guys make that affect their consistency in training this time of year, coming out of the summer and going back to school and going into the fall. What do we see happen to these players that, that don't have a good plan, man? Yeah, um, with kids going back to school, there's a lot more demands on these kids. So they kind of, their mind and their just physical body, like they, they gravi gravitate to something else. But um, if their goal is to um, play past high school baseball, play past college baseball, or even just dominate high school hitters, yeah. there has to be some continuous training. Um, it's, it's not enough to just do your work in the summer and then come into the fall and give it up. Um, it takes about two weeks for our body to detrain, and that's, that's, that's not good, especially uh, such a physical demanding sport like baseball. There needs to be year-round training. And that's not just velocity training. That's your mobility. That's your recovery protocols. That's, yeah. that's getting, getting your butt in the weight room and, and getting stronger um, week by week. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if we look at D1 and pro players, how many of those guys are slide of frame? No, how many of those guys not, not many. don't have skills that scale, man? Like, yeah. I mean, if we're talking about, I think I've heard before, the average major league pitcher is 230 pounds. Yeah. Like, I think our average high school player in here is 130 pounds. Yeah. So, like, if you're out playing all summer in the heat, and that's another thing, too. Let's touch on that a little bit, Ben. What, what about if you played all summer? Like, what does your training look like when you're playing? And now we spin that into the fall, and you got class. You got mom and dad like, hey, you got to get your grades. You got to get your homework done. Like, there's only so much time that we can, like, we can uh, budget there, right? Yeah. So if you played all summer, and now you're rolling into, and you don't have a plan for your early fall. What do we see? The what do we see there? Yeah, my guess is if you played all summer uh, at these showcases, at these tournaments, you probably didn't lift much. So right. the fall, I mean, the, that's 16 weeks of the fall semester. That's a huge time. Just get back in the weight room and just get stronger, build that base. Uh, if we don't have that base going into the spring, then our body's going to easily break down and. And you're definitely not going to see that velocity jump that everyone yeah, wants. I mean, yeah. that's that's always the biggest. You know, I want that velo jump. I want that velo jump. But if you're not getting in the weight room and you're not you're not bench pressing, you're not squatting, you're not deadlifting, you're not taking care of your arm, you're never going to see that kind yeah. of stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, here's one thing that I see, Ben, and it's it's kind of the why are these kids falling into this trap, right? And I think it's, man, they don't know any better, yeah. right? Or you have this authoritative figure as your coach who he honestly holds the, you know, he holds the keys to a lot of decision-making in your career. Um, I've seen coaches threaten playing time if you don't come out to fall ball. Um, I've seen just, I hate to say it, and I, I, and I kind of going to come off like I'm talking shit, but it is what it is, man. We've been in business here for going on five years, and we've developed a lot of high-level players. Like, um, one thing we see from high school programs is they just aren't cut out, and they aren't designed to develop players, man. Yeah. And by, I mean, a lot of these coaches, by no, no fault of their own, I mean, I'm a firm believer that, like, there's no freaking excuse to not be good at this shit anymore. Like, yeah. the information's yeah. out there, right? But we don't see it. We don't see many fall high school programs that are dialed. Like, we don't see a lot of lifting in the fall. Yeah. We don't see a lot of, like, long tossing or throwing programs or just return to throw if you've been off all summer or things like that. It's just not very, you know, they're just not designed. These coaches aren't designing their high school programs yeah. 
to push these players to the next level. Yeah. They're asking these guys to do the little things they need to be successful at the high school level, hopefully help this coach yeah. win a ball game. And then most of them, sadly, write them off once they're done with their four years. Yeah. And then I see guys, you know, standing around looking at the sky like, what do I do now? And it's like, man, you've missed that four-year developmental window because you prioritized what coach wanted you to do and what coach's plans are for you and none of your own. So my thing for that is just like, hey, guys, if you're listening to this and you want to play at the next level, you have to have a plan, man. Like, it isn't just show up to your high school baseball and that's going to get you to the next level. Um, I wish it were that way. But you have to take your career into your own hands, especially this time during the fall when season is, uh, you know, school's starting, there's not much season going on. That's your time to make a really good plan. Um, so, guys, we're available for that. Reach out to us anytime you can. We'll put together a plan for you. Um, here's another thing. Uh, I'm just kind of pivoting off that, is if you want to be a D1 player, you want to be a college player. Um, I didn't play at the D1 level. I played at a JUCO, went straight to pro ball. Ben played at a JUCO, went to a D1 level. Um, ben, how many D1 guys that you played with? And I'm, I mean, there are those lazy guys out yeah. there, right? Like, yeah. we know them. We're not yeah. going to call any of them out. But, like, we've had really good – high school players scale to the next level here. And I can tell you what those dudes look like, like the Tonko Susacks, the Daniel Susacks, the TJ Nichols, Kevin Haynes, Charlie Hurley. I mean, we can keep going, Cam Walty. All these guys that we had at high, as high schoolers, they had detailed, detailed plans when they were late upper class high school guys. And undoubtedly that shit scaled to the next level. Yeah. In your time at the division one level, Ben, what did the best players do? The dudes that are you played with now that are playing in pro ball, what were their routines? What was their training blocks looking like? And were they self-sufficient? Yeah, I mean, they were definitely self-starters. No one had to come up to them every day and say, hey, you got to do this, you got to do this. They, they woke up every day and knew what they needed to do. I mean, their mobility um, protocols, they were dialed. Every, right. every single stretch had a purpose, had a meaning to it. Lifting, they were the first ones in there, you know, taking every rep serious, not dancing around, goofing off. Um, I would say the talented ones that, you know, got away with it for a while, it ended up catching up to them. Yeah. And, and I mean, and I tell, I mean, even some D1 guys here, and so definitely the high school guys, I mean, come watch the pros in, in yeah. the off season. I mean, none of them are in, I mean, they're all serious about their lifting. They're all serious about their mobility, their recovery, you know, it's their full-time job. And, right. You know, and they say, you know, success leaves clues and, I mean, here's the perfect place to look at that. You know, yep. we got Sam Long in here. We got Lucas Giolito. We got Tyler Ferguson. I mean, we have a laundry list of yeah. just successful dudes that, you know, leave their clues of why they're in the why they're in the pros right now. Right. I mean, our owner Ryan Matthews. I mean, he was he was played in the in the MLB. I mean, he has he has the clues too. He he's got some sort of the sauce to get there. You know, right? So. And that's one thing, man. Is like, I played with Hall of Famers. I've played with, you know, big league all-stars. I've played with guys that only get a cup of coffee. But even there, there's not one of them that were bad workers. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm not saying that 100% of the guys I played with in pro ball or even the big leagues were good workers. But they were either talent outliers yeah. where they had one or two things that they just did way and, better than yeah. anybody else. Yeah. Or their work ethic was an outlier, man. Like, yeah. I'm talking like – I played with Pudge Rodriguez, right? And I'm not just name dropping here. I'm name dropping this cat because one, he's a Hall of Famer, one of the best to ever be behind the plate, but he's the hardest darn worker I've ever seen, man. Yeah. Every time I showed up to the, to the clubhouse where I think I was the early guy, Pudge had a lather going at 6 a.m. in the morning when I showed up to eat my breakfast. This dude's crushing. He'd catch five innings in spring training and he's out on the warning track running. Right? I throw my eighth inning, I come in, where's Pudge? He's in the weight room again. Like, it's just like, holy shit, man, this dude's 42 years old, 43 yeah. years old, catching, you know, four to five times a week, and he's crushing, he's working circles around guys. Yeah. That's not an accident, man. Yeah. And, you know. Well, and the, the families don't see it, the, the parents and the kids don't see that. You know, they right. just see that you have to work hard. Yeah. And they, the chances are is, that high school kid is not that talent outlier yet. Right, there's right. only yeah, there's five of them. Five of them five, in the world, right? Five, ten of them in the world. Like, you have yeah. to put in the work. So, and guys, I mean, I know that this goes unsaid, and we're not just sitting here like, 
hey, hey, you got to work hard or this ain't going to work. Everybody knows that, man. Yeah. Um, but we're saying, like, with your hard work and what part of your hard work is, is getting down to the nitty-gritty and finding a plan for yourself. Yeah. Finding a plan that is going to help you scale to the next level. And that's one thing that I think we can really do here um, with our track record, with our guys that are in-house, with – the experience of our trainers in here, the experience with Evan Hogger and the Kime team over there, just what we have been able to do, what we know, what we've seen other high-level athletes do, um, we can help you build that plan, guys. But Ben, me, Evan, Mike, anybody that's around here can't track you down, all right? We know this is going on, but we don't know you by name. I don't know your phone number. I don't know your email address. If you're hearing this, and you just want to talk to us about what should this look like, we can help you with that. Um, give us a call. Ask us about what we can do. Reach out. It's, it's happening, guys. And the biggest thing that I preach is we can't hit rewind on the clock. You can't make the hour hand and the minute hand go backwards. If you waste another four months from the time school starts to the time, you know, uh, February tryouts come, and you're just kind of going through the motions, you're kind of going through the playing fall ball, and you don't have a detailed six day a week, five day a week, seven days a week program, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'll say it again, you're gonna be behind. You can't catch up, you can't make that shit up. And yeah. guys, I can't preach it enough, like challenge your coach, challenge the people that are supposed to be helping you develop. What is my plan? Ask them. If they don't have something, if your plan's the exact same as everybody else on your team, challenge it even harder or challenge yourself to make a new one. Uh, I'm going to let Ben put a little closing things on this. I'm going to put, put his spin. Ben, what do you got for these guys? that We're waiting for them, man. We're out here waiting. Yeah, I mean, there's no better time than now, man. Uh, you can't get these 16 weeks back. I yep. mean, like you kind of said earlier, uh, we, know, we now know that you can train this stuff. I yes. think that's kind of like the biggest disconnect. Uh, from these, you know, high school – again, we don't want to be talking shit, but from these kind of older high school coaches to who we are, you can now train all this stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of information, a lot of, a lot of tools out there to actually train this stuff. And there's no better time. Obviously, we want to win games. We want to be with our teammates. We want to be with our friends in fall ball. But there's no – there's – the best way you can be a teammate is by getting better. And you And in the fall when you're not – really winning games it should be about development and you just won't get that time back as a junior you won't get that time back I mean I know if I had something like this when I was in high school I would probably wouldn't have had to go ju juco right away right. I would I definitely would have been a better baseball player and just a physically better athlete if you know I had this environment right so um yeah that's what I got I mean no, there's no better time than now and Man, 16 weeks, that's a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, from now until December, January, that's a lot of time to make gains, especially as a high school kid hitting puberty. Um, a lot can change in those six months. Absolutely. So. Good stuff. All right, guys, that's what we got for you today. Um, if you need a plan, you need help with your training, you need help with a program, you need help just knowing what it takes to have your skills scale, give us a call. We'll put you in touch with one of our trainers. We'll get a plan together. And we'll get to work. That's all we got for today. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you guys next time.